What's up, everybody? Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net, and you'll see behind me another gorgeous mid-90s Lincoln Town Car. For those who know me, they know this car. They remember the video that I did of this car a year and a half ago when I bought this. It's a 1997 Lincoln Town Car that I bought back then with just under 4,000 miles. Now it's got 4,600 original miles on this gorgeous 97 Lincoln Town Car. Uh, I've dragged my feet long enough. It's time to let this car go. It's time for it to find a new home, and I'm hoping to find it a loving home that'll care for it. Keep the miles low, but enjoy it. It's got such little miles on it that you can put 10,000 miles on it or 20,000, and it'll still have crazy low miles. So looking for a loving home. We're going to do a full walk around video, show all the blemishes, tell you all about this car, what I know. Uh, we'll take it for a spin. We'll put it up in the air, show you the bottom of this car of a 4,600 mile 97 Lincoln Town Car. Let's get into it. And here she is, a beautiful 1997 Lincoln Town Car Signature Series. Uh, finished in a very unique color combination. I mean, this car is unique in a few ways. The mileage, um, like I said in the intro, and again, those of you who know this car, know the mileage on this car. Um, but the other unique thing is the color combination, which is really striking. Uh, it's a medium pewter metallic. It's kind of like a charcoal grayish green color, uh, but it's got a full black canvas top done by ENG Classics and a beautiful black leather interior. Very, very well optioned car uh, having, you know, factory power moonroof. It's got the 16 inch uh, alloy wheels, uh, heated seats, stuff like that is uh, all great stuff to have in a car like this. Uh, but then the biggest thing is the mileage, 4,600 I think like 37 miles. I'll show you when I get into it. Uh, this is a 97 model year car. If you remember when I did the video of this car and I retrieved it, I got a call from the original owner's son. His mother was still alive, um, but his mother wasn't driving anymore. She was very up in age and this car had been sitting for quite some time. This is a very special car to them. It was bought by the husband who owned a very, very uh, what will I say, uh, a very prominent woodworking company. Um, he did woodwork in other countries. He did woodworking in Dubai at the Burj Khalifa. Um, incredible, incredible woodworking company. Um, and he bought this car for his wife as a 25th wedding anniversary gift. Uh, but she was used to driving Jeeps at this time. She had Wagoneers, Grand Cherokees, and even at this time, she had a Grand Cherokee. Uh, unfortunately, she did not like this car. And that's a crazy tale to tell, but when I tell you these people had money and it wasn't an issue, this was maybe then kept as a special, you know, going to town car. Um, and it sat in the garage and years have passed. Uh, the husband had passed away. Um, and then this car kind of went dormant around 2007. Uh, when I bought the car a year and a half ago, it didn't run. Uh, part of the stipulation for me to buy the car from the widow of the original owner was that I had to physically come there and meet her in person. And she wanted to shake my hand and know who was taking away uh, this very special car uh, that you know she has owned all these years. Um, so I went up there with my trailer. It was the middle of winter. We got stuck in snow. It was incredible, incredible trip. We had a great time, Papa Bear and I. Uh, but we brought this car back, and this car didn't run. We winched it up on the trailer. Fuel pump was bad. Um, I let this car sit in my shop for, I think, maybe a year. It was last fall, I want to say, um, probably a year ago, that we finally got this car up and running. Uh, Pulled the tank, cleaned the tank, put a fuel pump, fuel filter, cleaned the injectors, cleaned the fuel system in this car, uh, and then went ahead and got it running and started going through it. Did four new tires, new brakes in the front, uh, ball joints, stuff like that. So it needed a good going through. And then I wanted to put miles on it. I wanted to drive it just to make sure that this car was, you know, ready to go and nothing was just going to implode on it. You know, sitting for a little bit of time, 
um, you know, everything hasn't been run or used. And I put six, 700 miles on this car. I think it's just under 4,700 miles. And I put those miles on without having to worry about anything else. It's got beautiful ice cold air. Like I said, new tires, new front brakes, new ball joints. I replaced the intake manifold with the new updated version. Um, I really went through this car to kind of get it ready to go again. You know, the big debate is 4,600 miles. Well, do you want to put miles on and devalue this car? You know what? This car is a great low mileage car, um, but cars were meant to be driven. And this car will always have low miles. I mean, unless someone buys this and just commutes every day in it, which I highly doubt because people don't buy 97 mile a year cars for that anymore. This car is always going to have low miles. But I dare you to go find another one with this kind of miles. Now, in all the time that I've had this car, I've had phone calls on it, tons of people wanting to buy it and, you know, pre-buy it. But I told everybody the same thing. It's not available until it's available. And today is the day that this car is available. Uh, so if you've been following me on this car and it's something that you're considerably interested in, um, I hope... I hope you, you get the opportunity at this car. Like I said, I want to find it a very special home. Now, before I do a, a thorough walk around and show you just a few little minor blemishes here and there, there's one thing I will say about this car. And I only found this out when I was there picking the car up. So I'm kind of glad I did go in person to pick this car up. When I went there, I, I mean, I got pictures sent to the car in the garage you know, obviously it wasn't running. Um, they pushed the car out of the garage and took some pictures and pushed it back in, but the car wasn't running. When I got there, got the car loaded on the trailer, I was slightly disappointed in myself by not picking up on a few little minor key things. Um, and I left some of those key things alone because really, you know what, it is what it is. One of the key things is here, is this is a 97, you'll see the word town car on the fender. From 90 until 96, a signature, an executive, and a Cartier would have had town car scripted on the rear quarter windows. 97 was the only year that Ford, for whatever reason, on the executives and the signatures, put signature series or executive series and did away with these town car emblems. Because you can see here in the quarter windows, there is no script. It would usually be right down here. Um, I didn't pick up on that until I was there. A uh, few other things I then picked up on now that it was out in the light and we were kind of blowing the dust off of it was some inconsistencies in paint, in just a few little odds and ends here and there on the front of this car, which then led me to find out that this car had been in some type of accident. Now it's got a clean Carfax. Uh, there's absolutely no records on Carfax, clean one owner car with no accident damage. But just now digging into it, and once you noticed it, I dug right into it. I said, the town car emblems are off. And then I noticed that, um, you know, there was some inconsistency, some maybe gap issues in a few spots. Uh, but I since realized that essentially the nose of this car has been repainted. There's been panels replaced on this car. Now, upon discovering this, I told the seller, who was the son of the original owner, I said to the seller, that's some wax, me wiping it down. I told the seller, I said, seller, you know, I came all the way out here. This car was a 10,000 or 4,000 mile virgin. And it's kind of not like it took it from a different level. Um, and it kind of disappointed me. We were able to negotiate through that um, even though we already agreed on a figure before I picked this car up, we renegotiated, we came to a mutual agreement, and I purchased the car. Uh, I don't know what happened to this car. I really don't. And he didn't know. He was, he was just as upset as I was. His mother, unfortunately, didn't know anything. You know, I, I think she had, um, you know, really just not cared or maybe just really didn't remember. I mean, this car wasn't used much. Nobody really knows. I think the only person that would know what happened to this car would be the husband. I don't know if the car was damaged at the dealer, brand new. Um, and the only reason why I say that is obviously the mileage on the car. 
and the fact that on the bill of sale there was a five thousand dollar rebate on this car um that could tell me that you know what it was damaged they fixed it with ford parts and then they told the buyer hey this is the car this is the issue we're going to give you a, a discount i don't know unfortunately he's not here to tell us so it's all speculation at this point it's guesswork but i will say that so i, I just want to throw that out there i'm not trying to kick the car down because the car is a beautiful example but i know i'm going to get phone calls and i'm and there's going to be lincoln collectors out there that want this because this car's got 5,000 miles or 4,600 miles um, but i want to be transparent in this car because this is a car that's going to attract a lot of attention for someone who wants it to drive it and collect it and just have a cool low mileage town car phenomenal car and it's one of those things that to the average person probably wouldn't pick up the inconsistencies that i would but just to cover myself and to be um 100 transparent that's what i want to put out there as my knowledge on this car uh, because you know what it's, it's going to make a difference and it does make a difference on this car as far as collectability wise it's not a hundred percent original paint car um but anyways we'll get more into that when we pop the hood i'll show you under the hood and stuff like that we're going to go around this car now that i've been rambling on for all this time this is going to be a long video i'll already pre-warn you got my finger out <laughs> we're going to go around this car i'm going to point out a few little things here and there really nothing too too crazy it's got a beautiful black canvas top on it which is in really phenomenal shape except for my dirty paw mark right there uh really nice stitching this car lived in its garage um, and it shows you know the black canvas is in gorgeous shape the brushed aluminum trim it even has the eng classics tag still intact not worn off with weather you know that's a key thing on telling you the history of this car why you know how is garage and whatnot uh is the condition of the cloth top the top is just absolutely beautiful coming down and coming into the body of the car i'm going to show you like i said a few little minor chips and scratches uh throughout like i said beautiful like kind of like a graphite charcoal gray color um all the lenses on the front here are in beautiful shape nice crystal clear oem ford um front bumper cover now the front bumper cover when i bought this car had um a impression right down here uh in like the plastic like they they bumped it into something and they left it like that for quite some time so i had the front bumper repaired i didn't want to do a replacement because it was i think maybe an original cover although i don't know and finding an oem cover or even a nice used cover is impossible um, so i did have that done uh, the front bumper cover has been again repainted by me or uh, my local body shop um, but throughout the rest of the car a few little minor things um, you can see like a little chip there a little scratch there right here on the fender there's a couple marks you know i'm assuming from just carelessness storing the car in the garage i did put four new continental white walls on this car there are a few spots of corrosion you know just little itty bitty spots where you'll see just minor belts of corrosion just starting in the clear coat you can see here the town car emblem that was my giveaway that i noticed that I really put my antennas up uh nice paint on the collapsible mirrors original heated mirror glass side glass is all in nice shape paint on the car is i mean beautiful it, it looks good it shows good the chrome strips are in great shape lower doors great shape very tiny itty bitty little guy right there uh, it has a black painted pinstripe down the side. You can see here another new uh, True Contact Continental tire. But again, the wheels just show a few little bits here and there of corrosion. Uh, nothing too, too crazy. But, you know, this car might have seen one Chicago winter. 
Again, I tried to get as much history as I could, but the son just really didn't know. And, and the, the mother being up there in age, she really didn't remember much either, you know, as far as even when they used this car. Um, but it was hard for her to let it go. It was just a visual thing that was in her garage all these years. Um, you know, a reminder of her husband. Like I said, this was an anniversary gift. Come around the back corner of the bumpers here. Nice shape. All the chrome is in great shape. Tail lights, beautiful original tail lights. The Lincoln emblem. Uh, now this is an early 97 model year, so it has the lighted light bar, which is great. Uh, <laughs> usually, I think it was October-ish, they did away with the lighted bar. Um, I'm not crazy about this. I do leave all the original dealer stickers on it, but just a horrible spot to put that, in my opinion. You know, putting it above the town car emblem would have been a little bit better, you know, if you ask me. Um, but that's just me. Beautiful paint around here. It does have um, a little scuff in the chrome there and a little spot in the bumper there. Again, taillights are in beautiful shape. Chrome is in beautiful shape. Paint on the quarter is beautiful. Piece of dust there. The wheel arches. Another true contact continental tire. Um, again, a few little spots right there on the edge. Right there, I think the, a lot of this was actually, you can see from the original wheel weights. When I bought this car, this car had the original uh, Michelin XW4 white walls. Um, so, and I don't know why Ford did this, but they put the wheel weights on the outside, uh, which is kind of crazy. I don't know if they had sticky weights back then, to be honest with you. Oops, when I just stepped out. Nice, nice Anthony. Beautiful original glass. This door here, all the panels, the side rub strips show really well. Uh, original keypad, nice shape. All the door gasketing uh, is nice. Again, nice clean lower doors, the chrome in here. There's no pot marks or anything like that. Mirrors again show well. Across the glass. I believe this is the original Ford windshield. Yeah, you can see the Ford logo there. I don't know. Oh, that says Roto Lincoln Mercury. Maybe a customer number, number 1441. Didn't even notice that until now. Fenders. There is a chip in the paint right here on the edge. And this one is fresh. I don't remember this from before. I don't know how that happened. But, and the 225 60 16 Continental White Wall I put on. Again, same like all the other ones. Just a few little spots of corrosion. Now, this was a, where the weight was on this one. And I sanded and tried to polish that one to try to get it to. Uh, Few little spots and maybe wax or something. Just stuck in the pocket there. I'll come around the front of the car. Chrome strip in here is a nice shape. Chrome on the grill. Stand up hood ornament. Front license plate bracket. Now up on the hood, you can see the paint on the hood is in nice shape, but every, every you know, few spots you might see, it's smooth. I guess maybe I can't see. I think if I remember right, there was, yeah, you can kind of see it, right? It's hard to see. But right here in this area, I don't know if my foot, you can kind of see it right there. There's some very, very light sand scratches from when they refinished the hood. And I think may have done a small repair right on this front edge. We'll pop the hood and show you that in a minute. Now, once I noticed the 
um, once I noticed the emblems and I started peeling the layers of onion back and saw a little waviness, like, um, or a few little scratches like I saw there, actually right here. I'm kind of seeing just in the paint there. But the paint on the hood has got a nice gloss to it, real nice shine to it. Um, I believe as far as the extent of the paintwork, I think it was the nose and then blended into the front doors of this car. I believe all the rest of the paint on this car is all original paint. All right, I think I explained that. I'm probably rambling on, maybe being too honest and descriptive, but you know how I like to be. When I know stuff, I like to point stuff out. We're gonna dive onto the inside, then we'll pop the hood, pop the trunk, um, start it up. All right, jumping on to the inside of this beautiful town car. Uh, one of my favorite things about this car is the beautiful black signature series leather. Something that you don't see often um, in these cars. You, black interiors, I don't know why, you just don't see often uh, in this generation. Uh, town car, especially in a signature series, I don't believe they offered it in the uh, Cardi years, but real, real nice. All right, just to satisfy the exact mileage, 4,639 miles, um, 3,998 when I bought it. That's how many miles we're on it. All right, let's take a look inside the jams here. You can see all the anodizing and everything still nice and clear on um, you know, the latches. Got the original door jam sticker there. Now this car, this is reminding me here, you'll see these plugs. Uh, there's a few of them throughout the door jams. This car was Z-Bart undercoated when it was new. And Z-Bart, what they also do is uh, drill holes and spray inside the doors. Um, so you will see a few plugs in the jams, nice and clean in here. those jams and you can see here oh i just dropped my rag uh, the bolts haven't been broken loose from the factory over here they still have paint on them uh, so i know the doors haven't been messed with alignment wise straighten that out beautiful black dash i love the waviness of the dashboards of this generation town car you can see beautiful, soft, supple, black leather interior, heated seats um, on both sides. Kind of another harder to find option on these cars and hard to find that still work. Um, that's, that's a significant thing right there. Beautiful black upholstery, um, the switches, the wood bezels, the little hideaway. It looks like a just a little bit of stuff in there. Nice speaker grills, all the carpeting. You got your trunk and your fuel door, your lock and your unlock buttons. And again, usually you see these, the letters start to wear off. At 4,000 miles, there's absolutely nowhere there. Carpeting, a few little scraps of sand from me getting in and out of it, moving it around. But aside from that, very clean. Uh, power recliner. And we have power lumbar. Again, beautiful, beautiful leather in this car. Really, really clean. Jump onto the back. Inside the gym again. Let's see the plug down there. It's a plug for me. the Z Bard undercoating. I think there's actually another one in the quarter here. All the gaskets are in nice shape. Again, beautiful black upholstery, door panels. These guys still operating and still closing and holding closed. Nice clean carpet. Beautiful black leather. Now, some 97s have 
cup holders. Oddly, this one doesn't. I think that might have been a Cartier thing, the 97. No other um, town car of this generation had that. I think it was a Cartier thing, now that I'm thinking of it. Headliner's in great shape. And beautiful black on the interior. Come around to the passenger side. Anodizing, you look how fresh that is right there. Jams there. Rear shelf, nice and fresh. Back seat. You know, this is a car, one of those cars that you can confidently say that chances are not very many, if anybody, has ridden in the back of this car. Actually, I shouldn't say that. My daughter has ridden in the back of this car. Uh, but previous to me getting it, my daughter thoroughly enjoyed this thing. Still closing, which is unbelievable. Shows you how many times these doors may have been opened or not opened. Incredible. And there you can see these bolts haven't been tampered with or adjusted. gasket beautiful passenger seat as well just the real nice soft supple leather uh, you have dual opening armrests unfortunately no cell phone option in this car uh, but those are 50 50 split carpeting over here in real nice shape Heated seat works on this side as well. And again, look at how nice uh, these wood bezels are. And your little hideaway spots. Real, real clean on the interior. All right, I'm gonna jump behind the wheel. We'll toss the plate on it too, so we'll be ready for a test drive. Uh, but then we'll take it for a spin. All right, behind the wheel of the 97 Town Car. I love to show you what I got for books and keys and stuff like that. Uh, in the bag here, actually still sealed from Ford, this is the 10-disc automatic CD changer cartridge, uh, or magazine as they called them uh, back then. I do have the original books uh, with this car, Roto Lincoln Mercury and Subaru in Arlington Heights was the original selling dealer of this car. Um, I don't know what this is, temporary registration permit. Got all the pamphlets in the back here. Also have the key code for the keyless entry. Um, just little things, the stickers for the fight anti-theft. I don't know why those are in there. That This sticker here is actually a transfer. Usually that's a stuck up here um, and then dealer prep removed, but those are the instructions for the uh, home link system. And then obviously the original owner's manual this is the key punch out. Uh, it even still has the Lincoln, probably a Mark Cross pen, uh, which is pretty neat. This is the original uh, invoice of this car. November 25th, 1997. Town Tahara signature, pewter over black. The VIN number, uh, 39,000 was the price of this car. Sales tax. And then you'll see under factory rebates, and I don't know if it was in fact a factory rebate or if it was a, a discount and they put it in there, but they gave a $5,000 discount on this car. Now, November 25th, 97, that would have probably been that this car was a late car. The 98s were already out. I, I don't know. I really don't know. 11 29 of 97. 
the car was purchased um, and this car was paid for with cash um, so i have that i also have two sets of keys with the original jewel style key and jelly bean style remote i'm gonna stick the key in there This stuff back in the glove box. Turn the air down just a little bit. Nice ice cold air. 4,600 miles. We'll turn the lights on because it's going to be automatic. Pop the trunk. And if we come around to the trunk here, you'll see a very nice trunk. Um, you know, carpeting and everything is real presentable inside here. Original floor mats. You can see my detailer did a little something designed that they're not stamped out like that or uh, done up like that it was really just uh, the way he did it with the machine obviously took a lot of time doing those uh it does have a full size spare uh, let me see if i can dusty but a full size spare it looks like it's never been on the ground actually yeah it's still got the label or the line and the pink is still on the white wall let's see if we can get this back on there there we go uh, these are the original plates that were on this car. The Land of Lincoln. Roto Lincoln Mercury 07 was the last time this car was tagged. Uh, this guy is usually Velcroed there. That's for the uh, pop the gas door in case the door popper doesn't work. Your compact six or ten disc changer. Magazine is in the glove box. Trunk lining nice. You have your jack and everything up there in that bag and one of the cool things with this era town car and i like to point out if it's like that you see these last names of some of the quality control inspectors as this car went down the line um to see that you know especially this one this one's always usually worn off same with that one there because it usually lands right on this gasket here which you can see is in nice shape i mean even like the chrome here see how nice that is that's usually a little weathered by this point um, but very very nice inside the jam here now here's a little oh here's another plug <laughs> uh take into consideration this ford sticker this ford sticker has the vin number of the car on it this is going to be important when we get under the hood uh, but trunk pull down that's perfect all right coming up to the hood now again i was all excited thought this was going to be like holy moses and um i caught the lincoln emblem or the town car emblems then i'm looking and looking and looking and i'm like oh okay i saw these uh, stickers here these ford r dot stickers now for those who don't know uh these are stickers that replace what would have been like that sticker in the trunk with the original VIN number on it if these are replacement panels. If they weren't Ford OEM, they wouldn't have the Ford logo. They just say R dot, but these are Ford replacement fenders. The hood was repaired. The fenders have been replaced on this car. Again, clean car facts. Husband who bought this car and really knew about this car is long gone. It's a mystery of what happened to this car. Um, I noticed that and that's when I realized, I'm like, okay, this car has had, you know, a considerable accident damage somehow. Um, again, I don't know if it was when the car was new, when they drove it off the lot the day after. Um, nobody seems to know that part of it. Um, but all the stuff that they use to repair this car is Ford stuff. I mean, I'm assuming if the fenders were replaced, the headlights are probably replacements. But again, they use all Ford parts, grill, stuff like that, OEM. Obviously, back then, this stuff was still readily available. Today, you can never find stuff like this. So, in complete disclosure, that's this car. You know, that's the one, I guess, stain, you'll say, on the history of this car, even though it has a clean Carfax. Again... Some people might say, I would have never noticed that. You're being too honest. Why would you even say something like that, Anthony? Um, and not just try to pass it off. Well, I don't want to pass it off. I don't want someone to buy this car 
or expect like I did when I went to get it, that the car is untouched. It's delivered from the holy hands of, you know, St. Peter because it has had some checkered history that is unknown. All right, that's, that's my disclosure there on this car. Um, as far as service work, like I said, I did coolant flush. We did replace the intake manifold. You can see it's got the updated aluminum crossover. The plastic original intake manifold was obviously still fine, but I just knew it's a ticking time bomb. And whoever bought this car, I didn't want them to get in it, drive it, and then that just let go because it was a common problem. And Ford recalled these cars, but obviously this one was never done because it had such little miles on it. Um, all inside here, nice and clean. It's got the original plastics. Original hood latch. You know, everything is nice and tidy in here. Ice cold air conditioning, you can see it dripping. A lot of this though is original still. Original plugs, original wires, original hoses. I did do a replacement battery um, inside the hood here. Uh, but for, you know, overall, very, very clean car. It does have new front shocks, new upper and lower ball joints on both sides. And she runs phenomenal. All right, plates on her. Let's take her for a spin. Bring her back to the shop. It's going to be hard for me to give this car up. You know, with me, I'm not like, uh, you know, I don't know what they call a hundred point collector or whatever. Like, so to me, that doesn't bother me. Um, I like the car for what it is. And you can see how beautiful this car is all the way around. this town car for a spin back to the shop actually one of the other things I'm just realizing in here two things actually you can see up on the top of the dash very very faint little scuff mark like or two little scuff marks right there and then you can kind of see on the front of this airbag cover um what looks to be little spots and i don't know what that is I, we tried cleaning it off my detailer tried cleaning it off i don't know what's going on uh, with that but i wanted to point that out as far as interior i don't really remember anything else all right let's go let's take her for a spin Oh, the other thing I should point out, we got doors locked, yeah, power moonroof, fully opening, yeah. driving with my knee, and then close, this is me not pushing the button hard enough. Um, what else can I tell you about this car? 
kind of gave you a rundown as far as service work. Might be repeating myself at this point. I know I've talked a lot about this car. Power seats. Um, four new tires. It had the original Michelin XW4s. Uh, new front shocks, new front pads, rotors, new upper and lower ball joints. And you'll say, oh, geez, why'd you put upper and lower ball joints in it, Anthony? Those shouldn't be worn out. Well, unfortunately, the boots tear on these cars and they disintegrate uh, on these 90s Fords, uh, just like they do on the newer town cars, actually, the upper ball joints. Uh, so it wasn't that they were worn out. It was the boots were coming apart. Um, um, the boots were coming apart, and I said, um, you know, I'm going to put ball joints in it because they're going to get contaminated and they're going to wear out prematurely. Again, preventative stuff. I didn't have to put ball joints in it, but I did. Same with the intake manifold. Didn't have to, but I did. Uh, but in doing that, it was a full... Let me close this. There we go. Full coolant flush. Um, we did a transmission service, dropped the pan. Um did a filter and I don't know five or six quarts of fluid oil change now when I bought this car at 3,998 miles one of the ways I knew that this car never had an oil change in its life it had the original Ford Motocraft oil filter which obviously you can get replacement Motocraft filters but like I said earlier this car had been Z-Bart undercoated when it was new and on that filter was overspray of the Z-Bart undercoating so, again, another thing to indicate the originality, call that a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. Uh, but when we did the uh, fuel pump and got the car running, that was the first thing we did before we started it, was we drained the gas out of the car and then um, took the car, started it with the fresh oil, fresh gas, and she was ready to go. Uh, she drove nice. I mean, the tires were square, and I put the tires on it the brakes the ball joints intake and I brought it up to 4,640 miles so I put 640 miles 642 miles on it you can see how nice she drives nice and straight I do enjoy that they paved this road thankfully she cruises nicely she's a beautiful car um, you know again I might be being too brutally honest on this one, um, but you know I was somewhat disappointed when I went and looked at the car, but I was already there, so I wanted to make a deal. We, we were able to come through it, um, and obviously that's going to reflect in my asking price. You know, that's that was kind of a, a big thing that I was disappointed in because I had in my mind, okay, this is probably the lowest mileage '97 town car out there, well optioned, sharp colors. You know this car was going to be collector grade and then that kind of brought me down a little bit but it hasn't deterred me and it shouldn't deter anybody else who wants to buy this and enjoy it as a beautiful town car and have bragging rights and you got a four thousand whoa we don't want to crash four thousand six hundred and forty one mile lincoln town car she's got go to it dual exhaust now see, if you did that with that old original intake in it, that thing would have blew right apart. And that's why I replaced the intakes because I know that's gonna happen. It happened to me when I bought my 96 town car back in 06. That was 20 years ago. Uh, it was my first car in high school. Took it up on the highway, matted the gas down. I was a kid, blew that SOP right apart. Pissed cooling out all over the highway. Had to call my dad. Uses AAA. Dad, come get me. Um, so that was my learning curve on intake manifolds for these. 98 or 96 to 2002. It, it was a bad, bad design. But anyways. Anyways, any questions about this town car, give me a call. 978-930-1004. Uh, Anthony here, Specialty Motor Cars. Website, Specialty Motor Cars. Dot net you'll find all the still pictures of this car like i always remind you don't let distance stop you from getting a dream car like this in your driveway i drove all the way to uh chicago area to get this car while i won't go 
deliver it personally to you, I will help you arrange shipping to get it delivered right to your front door. Let me know how I can help you with that. Dad, everybody's gonna ask, well, what's the price on this car? And this has been the hardest thing for me to figure out is what I'm gonna ask for a price. And the price of this car is gonna be $24,995. Any questions, like I said, give me a call, 978-930-1004. Uh, my name is Anthony. Oops, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. I do have, like I said, all the uh, two sets of keys for this car, two remotes. I have the books. I have the little pamphlets, all the floor mats. Um, Full-size spare has never been used. Uh, all that stuff I have clean title uh, in the original owner's name. Uh, and if you want, you can shoot me a text message. I'd be more than happy to send you... Um, a screenshot of the Carfax report um, to show that there is no accident history with this car. All right, got the bottom of the 97 Lincoln Town car here. Uh, I'm gonna show you some of the details of the bottom of this car. Uh, like I mentioned earlier for service, uh, upper and lower ball joints, front shocks, front pads and rotors. Uh, and also, like I mentioned throughout the video, this car has been Z-Bart undercoated when it was new. Uh, you can kind of see that all over the chassis components, um, floor pans, stuff like that. You know, you got to put yourself in the mindset of these people when they bought it new in Chicago. They wanted to protect the car. Obviously, all these years later as a now survivor 4,000 mile car, that wouldn't have been something that would have been exciting for someone to do um, or see today. But... You know what, it's a Lincoln Town car, it's not a Porsche or a Ferrari. Uh, we did do a uh, fuel filter, stuff like that, fuel pump when we got the car. You can see some of it's flaking off, like the rear axle. Uh, but they didn't do the drive shaft or the exhaust. Uh, the exhaust on these cars are stainless steel. Rear airbags are in nice shape. Actually, when I bought this car, it had the original Ford oil filter in it. And I only know that because it had a little bit of Z-Bart overspray on it uh, when I had to take it off. And we did the oil change when we first started the car. Any questions? 978 Appreciate everybody for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments. 978-930-1004. We'll talk to you on the next one. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk to you on the next one.